Hey, how you doing? This is Nick Christopher's. Welcome to Mob Tales. Hope you guys have been enjoying our segments. Uh, last time we talked about uh, the Florida guys, Chris Prokos and all them. Uh, today we're going to go to Chicago. Home of Al Capone, as a lot of people would say, which it really isn't, really. Before we get into the actual story, just to give you a little bit of info, Al Capone is actually from Brooklyn, and he stayed in Brooklyn for a short time until he got into trouble, where he slashed some guy Frankie's, uh, where he got slashed in the face by the guy Frank, after he made a little comment about his sister, his sister's ass, actually. And he got removed from the Harvard Inn, and Frankie Yale sent him out to Long Island, believe it or not, for all you Long Island people. He was out in Farmingdale for a short time, and he ran a lot of the bootlegging, oversaw some of the bootlegging for Frankie Yale in that area before he, he was sent out to Chicago. At that time, he was about maybe 17 years old, and he was already married to his wife, and I think he had his first kid around that time. Then he moved out to, to Chicago, and to hang out with Johnny down there, and that's how he became sort of like the boss of Chicago, when he eventually became the boss in the Chicago area. Now, in that Chicago area, a little bit, a little bit towards Al Capone's demise, sort of towards around that end, there was a guy that he was around there that a lot of people don't know about. His name was Gussie Alex. He was Greek, but he was well-connected with the Chicago crew. Now, in Chicago, they didn't have families. They call it the outfit. So almost everybody and anybody could be a member. Actually, correction, not a blood, not a member of Cosa Nostra, but connected, well-connected to Cosa Nostra or the outfit per se. Gussie Alex was a considered the third most powerful guy in Chicago. Why? He ran the political wing. Everything that ever happened politically, he ran. He was a political fixer. He was a protege of Jake Guziak, who worked with Al Capone back in the day. Gussie Alex worked with guys like Humphrey, uh, Humphreys, uh, Humphreys was his last name, Murray Humphreys. Uh, he worked with guys like uh, Joe Weeper, uh, Tony Batts, Tony Batts, Accardo. Uh, he worked with all these kind of major guys in the area. Gussie not only ran the political wing, which was called the Loop, but he also did a lot of gambling. He ran a lot of gambling dens, a little Shylocking, bookmaking, you name it. And Gus was considered a very powerful guy. There was this one FBI agent, William Roma. They used to follow Gus everywhere. And he was getting, after, for a little while, he was getting really irritating. And there's a little story about Gus when he was just getting seriously irritated that Romer, William Romer, was following him around everywhere. So, in reality, it caused him a lot of stress, mental stress, believe it or not. So, Tony Batts, Tony Accardo told him, listen, Gussie, why don't you go out in the mountains? Get away for a little while. Maybe it'll help you to relieve some of the stress that this Romer guy is causing you. Ironically, he's a wise guy, tough guy, bruiser, gambler, so forth and so on. This guy went out to the mountains to decompress, which is pretty funny to think about. Here's a tough guy going to decompress. But Gussie Alex was considered, like I said, a very big guy. Uh, the New York Magazine, one of the New York magazines, considered him the 15th, 15th, 1-5, strongest mobster in America. So that's another story that a lot of people don't know about. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Gussie Alex and a lot of his movements in Chicago, Vegas, and L.A., eventually in another segment. I hope you enjoyed this one. New story, and I hope to see you soon. You want to know more about me and my books? NickChristophers.org. Check you out soon. Be safe.